Hey, today we are going to discuss one of the most important things on a loom and that is measurement. And nothing on a loom is what it says it is and that drives everybody nuts but it's what it is and you just have to accept it and learn to roll with it. But the first thing that we're going to talk about is measuring wire heddles on a loom. Um, wire heddles come in four different standard sizes these days pretty much eight and a half inch, nine and a half inch, ten and a half inch, and twelve and a half inch. And people will take a, a heddle off their loom and measure it and they'll go, oh, this measures ten and three quarters. What does this mean that I should do? The first thing that you have to do is not measure the heddle. And I know that that's counterintuitive and it sounds awful and everything else, but it's true. We don't measure the heddle itself, we measure where the heddle goes. And so today I want to show you on the loom exactly where that is that we do want to measure so that you can always measure correctly when you need to order new heddles for your loom or additional heddles for your loom. So this is a 10 and a half inch heddle. That is, we call it a 10 and a half inch heddle because that's where it fits on a loom. But as you can see, sitting here on the, the tape measure, it's actually 10 and 3 quarters. So this is that, that bit of guidance, do not measure your heddle. So here we are on the shacked standard floor loom. This one takes a 9 and a half inch heddle. And we can see that the span from the bottom of the bottom heddle bar to the top of the top heddle bar is 9 and a half inches. The heddles are actually a little longer than that but this is where we measure on the loom to find out what size heddle to order. All right, this is a Texolve heddle, T-E-X-S-O-L-V. It's magic. This stuff is, is well, they've got a lot of really good products. Um, it's from Sweden. It's a wonderful thing, but anytime someone talks about string heddles on their loom, usually if it's not a very, very old loom, they're talking about Texolve heddles. So we can see this is the eye, which is where the yarn goes. It's a nice big thing. And then this is the knot at the top and the knot at the bottom. And Texolve heddles are measured from knot to knot when they're pinned out under tension. This one is referred to as a 10 and 15 sixteenths, so just shy of 11 inches. Um, if you go to the Texolve website, Texolve, T-E-X-S-O-L-V dot S-E for Sweden, you can get all of the measurements for all of the common commercially made looms. So if you're in doubt and you don't want to take one off of your loom to measure it, to pin it out this way and measure it, you can look it up on their website. It's a handy website, a lot of good information on there. But these are the Texolve heddles, and they're usually sold in bundles of 100. Now make sure that unless you have a draw loom, which most people certainly don't have, you don't want the ones with the long eyes in the middle. The long eyes in the middle on a draw loom are like two and a half inches long. And that's not what you want for a normal loom. This is a half inch eye, and that's what you want for your loom. So again, from knot to knot, pinned out under tension, and that's how you measure those. So this is the shacked flip loom. It's a rigid heddle loom, named for the rigid heddle, which is the thing that's in the middle of it that enables you to make the two plain weave sheds um, and go over and under and under and over. When we talk about a rigid heddle loom, many people measure on the outside of the frames and they would look at this and say, that is a 24 inch loom, and it's not. This is a 20 inch loom, and where we're gonna measure is the effective weaving width of the loom, which is across the center of the heddle, which in this case is 20 inches. Most of these looms, of course, are going to be pretty close. Some of the ones like um, Ashford, which are a metric equivalent, and Kromsky, which are a metric equivalent, are going to be close to what they say. So across here, and Ashford might be called a 24 inch loom and it's actually gonna measure about 23 and a half. But this is where you wanna measure when you're trying to figure out what size rigid heddle loom you have and therefore what other size heddle you need to order in order to get the right one for the yarn that you're working on. Now rigid heddles come in different dent sizes. Again, dent, French for tooth, which means the number of spaces per inch. So what you want to do to find out how many dent your heddle is, is lay a ruler on it and count both the holes and the spaces in one inch. And that will tell you what size it is. Not just the holes and not just the spaces, you've got to count all of them in one inch. And the common measurements are going to be five per inch, seven and a half or eight per inch, 10 per inch, and 12 or 12 and a half per inch are the most common sizes. Ashford goes clear up to 15 per inch on the top end 
and two and a half per inch on the lower end. But this is where you measure your width and then count the holes and spaces in an inch to figure out what size you have. The next thing we need to talk about is measuring reeds on a loom. That's the next area of confusion that, that befuddles nearly everyone who works on a loom because what we say it is is not what it actually is. And if you just go at things with a tape measure, you're never going to come out with the right size. So we will look at it with a tape measure and then talk about how we adjust that measurement for the names. So the weaving width of a loom is how we normally talk about a loom. How wide a fabric can this loom weave? This one, the Shack Baby Wolf, is nominally a 26 inch weaving width loom. But if we actually measure its weaving width, we find that it's closer to 26 and a half. But what the heck, we'll talk about it as a 26 inch loom. But the 26 and a half is the, is the number to remember. So getting a reed a whole lot longer than 26 and a half isn't really useful at all. In fact, it's a little bit wasteful because reeds are sold by the inch. So let's measure the reed that we have in this, and it is exactly 26 inches, which means that I could possibly want to weave a little bit wider than this reed will allow me to do. Normally, in a 26 and a half inch loom, I'm going to have about 27 inches of reed, and that will allow me to weave as wide as I possibly can when I'm doing something. So again, this reed is 26. My weaving width is 26 and a half. I should probably have what I will call a 26 inch reed in this, but it's actually going to measure closer to 27 to give me the full weaving width. However, if you've got other reeds sitting around and they're not too much too long, you can actually press them into service on this because we see that the maximum length that we have that we can fit in between the two uprights on the ends is actually 29 and a half. So any reed that you've got sitting around that is smaller than that will in fact fit in this loom. It doesn't have to be exact. And if you have reeds that you want to make fit, you can also cut them down with a hacksaw. Modern reeds are built with a solid line at epoxy top and bottom under the splines so you can cut down between the blades and cut them down so that they will fit in your loom without them falling apart. Older reeds are a little bit tougher to cut down, but you can do those too. But new modern reeds, with a hacksaw, it'll take you 90 seconds and you can adapt it to your loom. Okay, a couple of other things about reeds. You'll notice that there's an end cap. Usually, eh, on older reeds, it was normally on both ends. On newer reeds, again, because of the construction of new reeds, with that epoxy top and bottom under the splines, they no longer need end caps on both ends. And so the manufacturers these days will typically just put an end cap on one end, and that one, of course, has your dent size stamped into it. All right, and then the top batten sleigh, that's this part, actually runs in channels left and right on the reed holder, which is the beater bar. Um, and, and because of that, the height of the reed that you use is adjustable. Um, one of our reed manufacturers makes a standard of five inches tall, and it'll fit quite nicely into this. A four and a half inch reed will also fit. Four and three quarters will fit. You could probably even go to five and a half in this. But almost all looms have an adjustable top element to the beater bar so that you can fit different heights in. So you can vary the width with a hacksaw. You can order different widths. The dent size, dent is French for tooth, and that means the number of teeth per inch, and that's stamped on one end and doesn't have to be stamped on both, nor does it need both end caps, and that's reeds. Mm -hmm.